say thank you. That's a tremendous yes. job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and we wonder how in the world are we going to be able to stand against something that strong or that big. You ever face giants? You ever look them in the eye? And sometimes you may feel terrified. And sometimes you may feel like David when he went before Samson. Something paraphrased, you come at me with a spear and a sword. I come at you in the name of Christ. Uh, um, look it up. He, come, he came in the name of the, of the Lord. Something along that line. It's in there reading. But you're going to face giants. And it's a matter of how we approach those giants. You see, as Christians, we want the victory but we don't want the battle. As Christians, we want to reach the heights of Zion, but we don't want to climb. And as Christians, we want the power of the resurrection without the crucifixion. If we could just have that power without all of that blood and the cross and the, 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 the humiliation that was put upon our Savior, give me that resurrection. But to go through that crucifixion, we would almost be ready to back off. It would be tough. But I want you to know, and you know this, there is no blessing you receive from God that does not come for the struggle. Amen. If, it's, if it comes that easy, if you hold something that lightly in your hand, it really wasn't worth the battle. It wasn't worth the trip. If you're going to have a blessing from God, you are going to face some giants. You're going to have some struggles. You're going to have stipulations in your life that's going to happen, that's going to take place. And then when that victory happens, you are going to know that God in glory was the one that helped you with the victory. Amen. If you did it yourself, usually it wasn't worth the battle. But God will take you through it. Think for a moment of your most prized accomplishment, whatever it may be. Right now, it may be graduation. That's a pretty big deal. That may be your most prized accomplishment. Was that certificate given to you guys? I mean, did y'all did y'all y'all studied a little bit? <laughs> y'all yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it, it took some doing to get there into the twelfth grade, didn't it? It took some doing. So it's going to be a real task when you think about that accomplishment. An accomplishment that really stands out in your life, whatever it is. Did you achieve that easily? Did it come to you without struggle or without hardships? It's something that you struggled for, probably. You exerted a lot of energy for that accomplishment. The whole thing is, the larger the giant the greater the victory when he falls. Amen. Your best accomplishment did not come easy. I want you to think for a moment. And I can share this with you. Is your marriage made in heaven? You think it is? Could be. Is it? Was it a struggle? Was it easy? Still is. Still is. <laughs> You're not doing something right, buddy. That sounds like a yes man to me. <laughs> George, say how long y'all been married? Fifty-three. Fifty-three years. <laughs> Now, I'm going to ask Miss Sadie, was it real smooth all the way? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it was a struggle, wasn't it? 
It was a struggle to make it 53 years, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Who would say yes, yes? Was it a struggle, Charles? Still is. Still is. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married since 68. That's easier for me to say than to remember the day, the year. <laughs> I think it's 46. It's going to be 47. There you go. We've been married 47 years. Was it easy? No. No, it wasn't easy. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It was hard. I was the ugly. <laughs> it was hard. But to accomplish that in, say, 53 years, 47 years, that's pretty good. That's pretty good in today's time. It really is. But it was a struggle to get there. It wasn't hunky-dory all the time. It was a struggle. And it's not near as big a struggle as it was. If there was ever a marriage made in heaven, it's now. It wasn't before. But it's now. You see, the greater the struggle, the better the accomplishments. The harder the fight, the greater the fall. The greater when the victory comes forth. In your marriage, in addictions that you face, and you're going to say, Preacher, we don't have people with addictions in this church. <laughs> you didn't hear one amen, did you? <laughs> you may think there are no addictions in this church. Chocolate. No. <laughs> I was going to say that German chocolate cake is pretty good. <laughs> well, see, that, that wasn't even what I was talking about. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, there are addictions, in, and I don't know anything, but there are addictions in our church. It's, it's here. It's all around you. It's in you. If, if it's not your your family, it's your children or your 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 relative. There's addictions around you. Television. Television. Has to be on all the time. Internet. Don't get in my. Don't step on my toes. <laughs> in every world. No matter. Quit preaching now. <laughs> all of this, all of this little stuff that you don't think is an addiction. It's an addiction. It doesn't have to be a pill. It doesn't have to be a cigarette. It doesn't have to be a drink. Whatever you're devoting your time to, if it's not glorifying and praising God, if it's satisfying self, that's an addiction. Whatever it is. We have people with addictions in our church. And if you want to get rid of the addictions, you're going to have a struggle. You can't just quit, can you? You can't do it. You ever hear that word cancer? Is that a struggle, Charles? It's a struggle. It's not something you can fight today and it's gone, is it? It's a struggle. When you hear that word cancer, there is a battle that's about to take place. You're either going to roll over or you're going to stand and you're going to fight and you're going to praise God and you're going to accept the prayers of the people and, and you're going to reach out for all the strength that you have. And if you're going to accomplish that, if you're going to be cancer free, if you're going to get up on your prosthesis and walk and carry on your life and do all these things that you're doing, that's a struggle in it. You could have just rolled over and quit and said, honey, bring me my dinner. It's a struggle. Life is a struggle. And if you're not struggling, God has something for you. The greater the struggle, the bigger the reward. The more that you look at the giants and you see the feet, the longer the victory is going to take. It's about overcoming the giants that you face. 
when you look out at something and you see and you say, I can't do that. And we just roll over and die. For some of you that don't know, the scholarship that these two boys received, the scholarship that Joseph received back there in the back, the scholarship that Allie received, and I don't know how much she received, I don't know if it was the same amount or not, but Allie was one who received a scholarship from this church five or six, eight years ago, wherever long it's been. Alice was really blessed. The church gave a thousand and the Methodist uh, higher education matched it. And then McMurray University as a Methodist college matched Match it that. again. Wow. Wow. But you see, but to give these kids this thousand dollar scholarship to the school, thirteen hundred and fifty dollars over here twice, that's twenty seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Thirteen fifty back there. Do you think that's easy for this church? If you look around you, is that easy? Not really. But it's blessed. It's blessed. But you show me a church in this town that's giving that much. The bigger the struggle, the greater the victory. What are the giants that you face? You're standing looking out at life right now and there's probably the biggest giant you can imagine. And you don't think you can whip it. All of us face <clears throat> giants of doubt. <clears throat> I can't do this. There's no way I can face this. I do not have the power to do this. You know the seven deadliest words of a church? I think it was seven. We've always done it that way. We've never done it that way before. There's a giant right there. We've never done it that way before. Duh. Giants of doubt. We all face the giants of opposition. That goes back. We've never done it that way before. Or we've always done it this way. I've always said over here, well, we've never sang that way before. We don't know those songs. You see, you've got some people that are that are pushing something, and you got some people that are here looking at giants and saying, I don't think so. I'm not too sure about all that. The giant of opposition. Those who see the giants and are afraid to step forth. Afraid to step across. Afraid to step in the water. Because of what might take place. We face sometimes the giants of hopelessness. This is just the way it is. Nothing's going to change. We've been doing it so long that we've just accepted that's all there is. You ever got to the point in life where you just thought that's all there is? There's nothing else. Nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to I'm just going to play the cards that I'm going to play the hand that was dealt. Is that it? <laughs> I don't know anything about cards or poker. Now. No. I'm just going to play the hand that's dealt. I'm just going to let it go. May not been the hand, the, has been the hand that, that was dealt you. That may have been the hand you've accepted. If you don't like that hand, I know in, in draw you can discard two or three cards and get some more. See if you like that one better. Yeah. He don't know anything about that. <laughs> 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 you still got that running? <laughs> I know you can always fold. <laughs> and if you fold, you just quit. You've lost everything you've exerted into it. I know that much. Every one of us, probably the, the biggest giant 
that looms on the horizon of every one of us is a giant of weariness. I'm just tired. I just feel like quitting. There's nothing there. I'm just, I'm just born. I just soon walk away and let it alone. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm not going to exert energy to this. I'm not going to put forth anything. I'm just tired. You ever been there? When you just wanted to walk away? You ever been there when you wanted to walk away from that marriage? You ever been there when you wanted to walk away from that family, that problem that you're facing? Have you ever just said, I'm through? Aren't we thank God that Jesus didn't say, I'm done. Instead, He said, it is finished. And say, I'm done. He said, it's finished. The sacrifice, the bloodshed was finished. The sacrifice was complete. He didn't look around and look at the giants He was facing and think, man, i got to get out of this. I don't want to cross over that barrier. It's about facing the giants. And in every report, everything you come against, you're going to find giants that are going to be standing in front of you. Some people are ready to walk forward and face them. Some people are ready to turn their backs and go away. They do not want to look at the giants. They do not feel they can beat them. I'm going to tell you right now, and you've probably heard this time and time again, greater is He who is in me than he who is in the world. Amen. Greater is God than any giant you can face. Greater is God than any circumstance you can come upon. Greater is God than any problem in any marriage you can face. Greater is God than is any cancer that's come upon you. Greater is God who is in me than he who is in the world. Don't stand back and look and feel defeat. You're not fighting alone. You're not fighting alone. Thank you. Giants may be big, but my God is much bigger. Yes, I'm not saying I don't fight. I'm not saying I don't struggle. I'm not saying sometimes I don't go in with doubts. But when I get my senses and begin to realize God is greater than any situation I've got. And God can heal. God can take care of. God can fix any problem I face. We are not to be the people that are defeated. We are to be people who celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? The resurrection? The devil was standing back thinking, got him. Dead. Buried. He's gone. And I can imagine him and the demons were celebrating and having the biggest time you could ever imagine. We won. And then that rock was rolled away. The proof that Jesus Christ lives and lives forever. That's a victory. My God reigns. The devil has no power over me. No more than I let him. Giants you face, they're as big as you want them to be. Two men went in and saw a land flowing with milk and honey. They brought in the fruits. They brought in the fruits of the land. They were there and they were looking at all that and saying, man, this is our, look what we've got. The other ten looked and thought, we better stay out of there. We don't need that. So where are you at? If there was 12 of us sent, where would you be? Would you be in the ones who saw the victory? Saw what God said He has already given you? Or would you be afraid to step across? We're facing giants. We're facing giants right here in our life. And it's about what do you see? Is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Is He the victor of your salvation? Is He the one who can bring you out of the pits of hell and stand you into the graces of God? 
If he's not, you better rethink your life. If you've never known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can accept Him right now the first time. And I'm guaranteeing you that's the struggle that's, that's a victory. The devil's going to whine and cry when you praise God. If you like what we're doing here, if you want to be a part of this, I want you to come. Whatever's going on in your life, there are giants out there and we're about to face them. They're not near as big as you think they are. Stand with us. Whatever God has for you today, claim it.
<laughs> Welcome you to the That's in her picture. Linda, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Jerry. Thank you so much. Oh, I don't think.